Hi, dear friends, this is our beloved cello. I'm sure you know the parts of your instrument in your language. Nevertheless, I mentioned them in English in order to be understood better in the future. So, we have the body of the instrument. The body consists of the front. Then the back. Going around the instrument we have the ribs. These holes are called due to their shape F holes. Then you see the neck of the cello. On top of the neck we have the scroll. At the lower end of the instrument we find the end pin. The four strings go from the four pegs over the bridge to the tail piece. This black board we put our fingers on we call fingerboard. Finally we use the bow. The bow has a stick and a tip and the frog. The hair, the bow hair and finally a screw. We tighten the bow hair with that screw in order to be able to play or if we don't want to play we loosen it. Now you sit down comfortably on a simple chair and pull out the end pin so that the left knee can disappear behind the lower edge of your instrument. Make sure that you are able to move slightly. Don't sit rigidly and motionlessly. Plus do not put the cello in a 100% vertical position. Just turn it a little bit. The first steps we do in the field of cello playing we dedicate to the two hands separately. First, the right hand. The most important stroke, or I should say the most important principle, is the so-called straight bow. Straight means here a 90 degree angle between string and bow. Since our bridge is curved, the position of a straight bow is different on each string. So put your bow on the strings and find out how a straight bow looks like from your position as a player. Do it on all four strings. Take the bow and put it on the A string. Just experiment a little bit. What should be a 90 degree angle? Something like that. Then you go on the D string. Do the same thing. Just check how it looks. Okay. Then the G string. Same thing. You can play around a little bit with it. And finally the C string. Wouldn't be straight. Wouldn't be straight. Here we go. We practice the motion the right arm has to perform without actually playing. You hold the bow with the left hand at the tip and glide with the right arm from tip to frog and back. Do it on all four strings. So you hold the bow in a almost 90 degree angle on the A string and find out how this motion feels like, what your right arm has to do. Then you go on the D string, same thing, 
almost 90 degree angle and glide up and down with your right hand. Then you go to the C the G string, sorry, same thing. Finally, the C string. And you notice that the motion on the C string is quite different from the motion of the A string. On the A string your arm has to go out quite a lot. On the C string it goes back. So, from the very beginning watch out for this difference. Do that very often, very often on each string. Get used to the difference of the movements. You should develop the feeling of following the characteristics of your bow, not vice versa. You should not hold the bow tightly and force it in whatever direction. No. The bow defines and demands the direction in which it has to be moved. With other words, we have to adapt our body to the conditions of the bow. You must get used to that principle. It is extremely important. To develop a bow grip with the necessary flexibility and agility of all involved parts like shoulder, upper arm, elbow, lower arm, wrist, hand and fingers. That will take some time. The basic bow grip is the following. You let your arm hang down, relaxed, and lift your arm a little bit from the wrist so that the hand hangs down. Now you put the four fingers on the stick, relaxed. Then you bend them a little bit so that the second finger touches the silver ring here. Finally you put the thumb against it from the back. That looks like that. Here's your second finger. Here's the silver ring and here's your thumb at the beginning of the frog. The thumb should be slightly curved. Not like that. Do not press with your thumb. Again, relax your arm. Let the four fingers fall on the stick. Bend them a little bit. Second finger touches the silver ring. Put the thumb against them. And here's your grip. In the beginning you'll find that demanding with the result of getting tight soon. Then you go back to the exercise of holding the bow with the left hand and sliding up and down with the right hand. After that you try again to hold the bow. And again, same thing. You glide and try the grip again. Now let's see whether we can pull a sound out of the cello. Today we only play open strings. Our strings are the A string, the D string, the G string and the C string. In the beginners chapter 4 I'll explain and demonstrate how to tune the instrument. Now you just concentrate on the bow and play open strings no matter how well the cello is tuned. Don't play too close to the bridge and don't play over the fingerboard. Find the point where you can easily produce a decent sound. The direction from left to right we call down bow. The other direction from right to left, up bow. Now 
you practice the following exercises. Okay, we start with the whole bow, one down bow, one up bow on one string. back to the exercise and try again without playing just the motion then you do the same thing this time one stroke on one string Divide the bow in two halves and play half bows only, either the lower half or from here to here the so-called upper half. slow tempo, the whole arm is involved. See? The whole arm moves from the very beginning to the very end. Whole arm. Then you mix the strings. It is up to you what pattern you use. For instance, C, D, G, A, D. Go back to the A, G, C, A, G, A. Be inventive, be inventive. Now, you want to play faster bows later or maybe now. We get the faster bows by shortening the bow. Rather slow bow. Now I play the same bow speed but shorten the bow amount. Now I double it again. And again. And again. And so on. You have to realize that the slow bow The faster you get, the more you get to the fingers. You have a lower arm stroke and you have a wrist stroke and a finger stroke. It's about the same. Slow bow, whole arm, faster bow, lower arm, and really fast bows, wrist and fingers. Finally, we try to tie two notes. Tying means you play two notes 
in one bow. Repetition is a magic word for everything we want to control physically. So don't hesitate to repeat these basic exercises over and over. And don't hesitate, even if you reach the higher standard, to go back to these basic things. Furthermore, don't restrict your inventive fantasy and find out more and more combinations and exercises for your bow on open strings. Have fun with it. Take care and so long. <laughs>